In May of last year, I got my private pilot's license, and this is a video about that. But it's also a video about grief and loss and sadness and your whole world ending and figuring out who you're going to be after that. If you don't know me and just stumbled across this video out of an interest in flying fun times, I feel like I should warn you that this video also features a lot of crying. My dad died in May of 2022. Since both of my parents had gotten their private pilot's licenses, the idea of getting mine had been in the air, so to speak, for ages. My dad and I had been talking about it a lot in the final year of his life. So in August, I started making calls and by September, I was on my way. Now, at that time, <laughs> I was still not in a great place, which had consequences for this whole process, but we will get to that later. But when I did my discovery flight, I felt genuine elation for the first time since he died. Like everything that had made me laugh or smile or feel some fragment of happiness up to that point was just watered down. But for the first time since he died, I felt like actually joyful. Part of why all of that other happiness felt diluted was that it also felt like a distraction from the main event, which was that my whole world had ended and I no longer felt like a person. But I was up there and I just felt like I was so sure that this is where I was supposed to be and I felt present and I felt like a person who exists. So I knew that this was a thing that I wanted to do, but I returned to the ground and I wanted to call my dad. <laughs> uh, instead, I called my mom and that was good up until we were both crying because of course there was a gaping void in the middle of that conversation. And so that is the place from which I started vlogging my pilot's license journey. There was stuff I wanted to say to my dad, but then sometimes it was just me needing an outlet for the absence of him and also like this space uh, meant that I was always aware that I might share pieces of it eventually. Sometime in January or February, I got cables to connect my GoPro to the avionics in the plane, and that added a whole other layer to the recording process because it essentially meant that I could record training videos for myself, and I did. It was way more useful than almost any other video that I was using because I had the corresponding um, like sense memory to accompany it. Like I, I could be watching the video and remember being the person in the video, if that makes sense. All of that is to say, that in the several days worth of footage that I recorded, the intended audience is very jumbled, very confused. Also, I recorded every single video on my GoPro. I had this better camera the whole time, but that's not the choice I made. So anyway, while the extended Sweeney cut, if you will, is truly just for me and my dead dad, I felt like there was something worth sharing in the larger journey that I took. And so with all of that preamble out of the way, here it is. <laughs> I just finished my second day of like actual flight, I guess. And it was absolutely beautiful. The sunset tonight was gorgeous. I just know that my dad would have would have seen the sunset and would have thought about the fact that like I was flying during it and got to see it in person and how cool that was. Another day of thinking about my dad in ways that felt joyful instead of sad. I'm a little sad now, but, um, but when I was in the air, it was joyful. I've been having a really rough couple days with the, the, the dad sats, uh, and we learned some information over the weekend about just things that the hospital could have and should have done differently. And that was really hard to hear, and it, I think, has been really hard for the last couple days. Like, it's, it's been sort of setting me back a tiny bit. Obviously grief is not linear and <laughs> all I can do is take this as it goes. So setting me back, what does that even mean? I don't know. Anyway, the point is it's been a really rough couple dad sads days and I flew tonight. We did, um, flew along the river out to the Lake of the Ozarks and then um, used nav to do like a direct route back. And that was really cool. The, the sun was setting over the lake as we got there. It was absolutely gorgeous. I'm just so grateful that I can do this um, and that I have this to balance out all the sad, which, you know, there's still gonna be, there's still gonna be so much more sadness but i'm grateful to have a source of joy too i just want to take a moment to marvel at uh 
online ground school just in general as a concept and like the videos and the way all of this works compared with what my dad would have done more than 40 years ago in like a classroom right like this is so different uh and there's just so much novelty here like tufts of yarn on the upper camber of the wing will streamline with the airflow to show the airflow patterns it's just so wild to me that this is like a thing that we've thought of to do my dad would have thought that was cool today was pattern practice which means i did takeoffs and landings just doing the square around the airport over and over did like seven landings i think one of them we came in too slow we had to do a go around because uh, we came in too slow and had to pop right back up and do the loop again in order to land properly. I was a little frustrated with myself for that. And it would have been really nice <laughs> to have my dad reassuring me. He would have loved this so fucking much. He would have loved. <laughs> hearing about this. He probably would have told me a story about shitty landings, but I don't know the story. I know so many of his stories, but I don't know these stories. I'm supposed to be collecting new stories right now. After I stopped crying, I got some water and I uh, came down to my little office. I decided to do a little more ground school. This is what was in my very next video in ground school. And a word of encouragement about go arounds. You should not look at a go around as a failed landing attempt. Rather, it is a sign of your good judgment in recognizing a hazardous situation and avoiding it. To be clear, my go around tonight was not an example of my good judgment. It was an example of my instructor's good judgment, but he did say not to look at a go around as a failed landing attempt. And so I'm gonna end the sentence there for myself, for my own purposes. Um, because I bet my dad would have said that too. Oh man, highs and lows. It is a new day, a happier day. Um, I did more landings and they went better. Uh, pattern work in general went better. And my instructor said she was proud of me, so, you know. There was like a week and a half where I wasn't flying because of combination of like my instructor's availability and also the availability of the, the trainers. The planes that we train in obviously need maintenance at certain intervals. Combination of factors, I didn't fly for a minute. It is really interesting how much this is <laughs> tied into whether or not I'm having like a really good or bad time in terms of grief management. Good is maybe too strong a word. I don't know that I would ever describe myself as having a good time. I'm still very much in the I cry every day sort of state of things. One thing about my dad is that he is like a, he was a prime, um, like, hey, look at this sunset. Hey, look at this view kind of person. So on top of all of the like obvious like flight things that I associate with my dad around all of this, there's also all the ways that you just you're just up there and like the sky is beautiful or the, the, just the view is beautiful and it really really truly makes me think of my dad i also had a fun little chat with my instructor kind of at the end about how a necessary part of learning things is being comfortable with being bad at them that is a thing that i have struggled with in the past <laughs> but I'm, I'm working on now i think of my dad i think of what he would say and oh, how immensely proud of me he was. I was thinking earlier today actually about how I want to be someone he would be proud of but I had to correct that and say that I want to be somebody who is worthy of his pride because I could have done I could do anything I could do anything and he would be so fucking proud of me. The seasons, they are a-changing. You can tell because today I'm wearing a sweater. The important update that I have is nothing to do with flying. It's that this morning I had to untie the plane. I don't often have to untie the plane. For whatever reason, the ropes were covered in spiders. There were so many fucking spiders on the ropes, and I don't understand why. What is going on? There? Anyway, the actual flying itself was good. We were practicing emergency landings, and we did some pattern work, and... Actually, I actually really like pattern work. I feel like 
that's maybe an unpopular opinion like I could I could see pattern work being boring for people but I don't know it's like very essential and there's stuff to do the entire time like it's a really active process which I think is really cool it's also part of what I like about slow flight is casual updates about landings and spiders the last time that I flew was October 3rd and today is October 15th and so it's been a minute so like uh, all I did today was touch and goes just stayed in the pattern it was great uh, but also the beginning of it was just regaining some of that muscle memory anyway my mom is in town so after I did all my takeoffs and landings which takeoffs I have down pat landings um, those need some work uh, it's fine it's all gonna be fine but my mom met up with me and we ate at the restaurant there's a little like breakfast lunch spot here at the airport it's really cute give me some feelings because my dad would have loved this place I don't think he even knew that it was here but like if he had I feel like this would have been his favorite spot in town or very nearly um, so you know I guess that means I just have to go here all the time on his behalf I am absolutely delighted by this image no notes I do actually have a lot of notes uh, for the online ground school thing because it's almost like I uh, produce educational video for a living so I have some thoughts uh, but but this one great work great work no no and once again delighted by the video editing uh at play here because we're <laughs> we're showing hypoxia with just a, a little soft blur that's it there's no um nothing Your else mind. really happening here they just put a nice little soft blur on her oh it's increasing no it's longer. increasing <laughs> as she loses oxygen to her brain she gets blurrier so anyway that's hypoxia in action you get a nice soft blur a uh, new face tune just dropped hypoxia winter is coming uh and i know this not only because i have a calendar and you know know how time works but also i had a really fascinating morning i was supposed to go fly uh early and <laughs> i pre-flighted the plane got it all going whatever and my flight instructor gets in the plane we're, we're ready to go and the plane won't start <laughs> we attempted it to start it six times which is the most you can do before you have to let it sit this is this is something i learned today uh actually <laughs> i learned this morning that i can you attempt to start it for no more than 10 seconds and then you have to let it sit for 20 seconds and you can repeat that up to six times after which point it has to chill for a half hour so there was another plane another trainer that um th i don't fly nearly as often but was there and wasn't being used she went back in to like you know return the keys and check out the other plane and whatever free flighted another airplane <laughs> and the same thing happened all over again i am like so soggy right now which is not the way that you want like soggy is never is never a feeling that i personally am going for i can't speak to you and your life and what you are into but personally not a vibe at some point i was like on the on the wing i don't know how to explain this but i was like sort of crouched down and my feet slipped out from under me so I fell, didn't hurt myself or anything, but like my butt got soaking wet. And then uh, <laughs> I was like, I gotta, I'm gonna go wipe the windshield down uh, because I got it pre-flighted before my instructor came back out. And so I was like, okay, I'll go wipe the windshields. And for a reason I cannot explain, I decided to use my sleeve, just whole sleeve swoosh. Um, and once I had done it to the one side, I was like, well, I'm in it now. So both of my sleeves are soaking wet. Um, you know, so when the plane wouldn't start, when the second plane wouldn't start, I was like, at this point, I kind of just want to go put different fucking clothes on. So another day of touch and goes. I did 10 landings this time. Last week I did a day of touch and goes with 12 landings and I feel like more, <laughs> I had more good ones in the 12 than I did here in this 10. So that's like a minor regression, which is not ideal. Okay, this is the thing that's tripping me up about like the whole process of learning to land a plane is that so much of it is just like vibes. The times that I am landing well, like I'm not 
thinking in my head about, I don't know, that like I'm leveling off 10 feet above the ground or like whatever, like none of that is, is how I am thinking about it. Like how I am thinking about it is, oop, feels like it's time for that. I feel like everything is like that though. Like every skill that you try to learn, you you hit this point where <laughs> for all of like the, the technical precise details, you know, there's a certain amount of just like, I don't know, man, you feel it. I just did my first night flight. It was very exciting. Um, I lost a fingernail in my gloves, but other than that, it went really well. Other than being cold, it's beautiful and good. We were making left traffic over the Capitol today, so I just kept flying over it. And I just, I felt like, it just, like in my brain it was like look at that dad like look how cool that is again in the, the way that feels joyful and good and not deeply fucking sad and it was good in part because it just felt like i was hanging out with my dad again it's really special that i have the capacity to have that experience it's like it's special and cool that this option is available to me like i have access to this thing that gives me that feeling that i have like the privilege to be able to take advantage of this this thing so i'm feeling really grateful for that today was really cool because it was another day of pattern work but also uh one of my instructor's other students was doing her check ride today um additionally cool that she's a 17 year old girl it would have been cool regardless she was not a licensed private pilot this morning but she is now um a <laughs> licensed private pilot was taxiing just ahead of us and then came back like we actually ended up a little earlier than we probably would have because my instructor obviously wanted to go be there to you know celebrate and congratulate her uh, but it was really cool because <laughs> you have to do like a handful of land landings multiple landings as part of the check ride and so we're we were doing pattern work right so i was just doing takeoffs and landings just take off do the loop around the airport land take off do the loop around the airport land it was very cool and exciting every time we heard her on the radio and then once she came in was actually doing the like takeoffs and landings you know she was in the loop with us so it was i don't know it was just very fun and cool and exciting to see and then um we got back and i guess her her dad is also a pilot and so her dad was you know was also like right there and it was a cool little moment there are definitely moments where um i feel a certain amount of bitterness about other people's joy <laughs> like where part of my grieving process is <laughs> just feeling really bitter and angry grief isn't rational right one of the harder to deal with parts of my grief is that feeling that it is making me a shittier and angrier person like i don't i don't love that experience the fact that this moment of this girl and her dad celebrating something that i'm not gonna get to celebrate with my dad was just like genuinely joyful to see it was nice to experience joy at someone else's joy in a way that would really understandably bring up a lot of <laughs> kind of complicated negative feelings for me i think like i don't think anybody would be shocked if i said that seeing that made me feel the old bitterness and anger it was just really beautiful and i'm glad that i got to be at the periphery of that really beautiful moment so anyway that's that you know sometimes you like write or say a word too many times and it just like loses all meaning uh, usually i feel like it's more with saying a word than with writing it but regardless that is how i feel about the word altitude and also altimeter it's maybe the combination of both of those words that is creating the problem but uh, like I have written those words altitude and altimeter so many times it's too much it's too much I'm over it. The cone of confusion. Deeply relatable. Today is six months. And I'm really happy that I'm here right now. Of all the things that I could be doing, of all the ways that I could be dealing with this day, this feels like the best choice. Today is hard and weird, but here I am. We've entered the part of the year where uh, for morning flights, I have to get all bundled up, but <laughs> by the time I'm done, I am sweating and it's terrible. I'm like getting prepped for my first solo now. So the next time that I come back here, we're prepping to fly to a new airport so that I have another option that I'm like super familiar with that I've done like been in the pattern for. Um, by the time I solo and then I'm also going to get the like take home pre-solo exam so that's 
it's all very exciting. It's happening. I'm, I'm like, I'm so close. I'm pacing around because I need to take a little bit of a break from uh, working on my take home exam for my solo. It is just really interesting to be back in school. Like, I don't think that I realized the degree to which that's what I was signing up for, but also, <laughs> um, also it's giving me some big grief feelings. He just would have been so delighted to <laughs> help me with my homework. I'm getting choked up trying to talk about it because it is very sad, but it, it's also, it's also not, it's also like, very joyful too at the same time. Like it, it is both. I'm learning to fly a fucking airplane. Like how sick is that? How cool is that? I'm learning to fly an airplane. And, and also this is in many ways a gift that my dad gave me. The fact that I'm doing this at all is a gift that he gave me. I guess I should get back to it because I can't actually solo it without finishing this test. My instructor is leaving for several weeks uh, in a week and a half, a week and a half to get her endorsement to solo. <laughs> I was just talking to my best friend about this, uh, the test for my solo, my pre-solo written exam. I'm doing actual school again in a way that even the online ground school it didn't quite connect. Um, and maybe that's because I went to school before. <laughs> before like videos that you watched at home were a big part of schooling. Um, I imagine for anybody like a decade younger than me, you'd be like, yep, this is this is school. Uh, but it, it's only in, in doing this in like having a multiple page worksheet that I have to look up the answers to that I'm like, damn, this is <laughs> this is school right here. I also keep thinking about how, you know, as I'm like struggling to find answers to questions about how helpful my dad would have been. My dad was through and through a lifelong learner. Like he, he was always trying to learn new things. Like that I think is the, <laughs> that is like a, a core element of his personality. Um, it is <laughs> just always learning new things and his ability to like remember the shit that he learned always so wild to me. This exercise, this like helping me with my homework, um, which feels like such a silly thing to be longing for as a woman in my 30s. One, my dad genuinely would have been a super useful resource in like, some of these questions are just worded weirdly and I'm like, I don't entirely know what the answer that they're looking for is, my dad would have. So like, as an example, one of the questions is to describe the engine in my airplane. And I am fairly certain that what they're looking for is something in my, the operating handbook for the plane. Um, there's, there's two different pages that have answers that feel like viable, um, two different ways of describing the engine that I'm like, one of these, either of these things seem like they would be the correct way to answer this question, but I'm honestly not sure which one is like what they're looking for. And not only would he have been helpful, like he genuinely would have loved helping me with it. Like th <laughs> this would have been such a like fun and cool and special thing for us to have had together. I could have been a woman in my thirties asking my dad to help me with my homework. <laughs> and <laughs> that would have been cute and fun. And I'm so like devastated at the thought that we don't get to have that, you know? Like, when I get to this place, I also often come back around to the fact that all of this sucks so fucking much because I had something really, really great. Like, this wouldn't feel this way if you sucked, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, maybe that's not true. I don't know. I don't know what it's like to lose a shitty parent, uh, but I know what it's like to lose a really good one. And it's bullshit. It doesn't make it better to know that, but it is like an important thing to sort of keep in mind, to keep in my heart. Um, and it is easier for me to do that when all of this, when like flight school stuff 
gets me in this place. There are so many other ways that my grief and despair show up that feel like there is no reprieve, like there's no remedy, there's nothing to be done for it, but to just sit in it and feel it. To a certain degree, like this is also something that I just have to sit in and feel it and that's true. But like also joy also gets to exist here. And so I, I don't know, this is like a whole barrel of feelings um, that are being brought up by this little worksheet, this little test. Okay, I'm done crying to a GoPro. <laughs> for today. I'm trying to finish this pre-solo written exam. There's a question about minimums. What are the basic weather condition minimums and what are your personal weather minimums as a student pilot? Like I know the answer to the first question. That's a, <laughs> that's a question with a right answer. Last night I was talking to my mom about this and um, I kind of got frustrated with her. I'm like, I snapped at her because I didn't want to keep talking. I just like wanted the conversation to end and I, I feel bad about that. On the phone, my mom was very dismissive about the the second half of this question. The fact that I need to come up with like personal minimum. She's like, well, why can't you just say like that they're the thing? First of all, like th this is how tests work. Like if there's <laughs> the fact that there's a follow-up question of like, what are my personal minimums as a student pilot means they're expecting me to have an answer to that question, right? Like I can't, I can't just say no answer. I need to have an answer. But the other thing that frustrated me about it is that it, highlighted for me the absence of my dad. My dad would have been so helpful in answering that question. Like he would have had really good suggestions. Whether or not my dad would have been any better than my mom at adhering to a set of personal minimums is a whole other conversation. When I was first learning stalls and how when I was up there and like having the sort of heart racing feeling of it, uh, where I thought to myself that I bet both of my parents fucking loved this, uh, except there's like two different re like two different reactions to me. So like my parents, I am both of them. I am certain. I, don't, I know I never got to talk to my dad about this, but I I know in my bones that my dad felt more or less the same as my mom did, which was, wow, this is fun, <laughs> uh, when it was him doing it. However, where my mom's reaction to me was like, oh come on, that's fun. Um, my dad's reaction would have been to like encourage and praise my caution. Not necessarily like fear for its own sake and also not in a like do as I say, not as I do kind of way, but just in like a talking about how responsible I am. <laughs> it's not a way that I would describe myself. It's not a thing that I think most people who know me, but it is a word that my dad used <laughs> on more than one occasion. When you love someone, you extend them so much grace in your interpretation of their actions and in your understanding of their motivations and, and whatever. Anyway, that is the latest on how this seven page worksheet is uh, messing me up in the heart. The last time that I flew, we graded my pre-solo exam afterwards and would have like tried to have me solo the next day, except that while we were doing that, my instructor realized that I still hadn't completed two of the items on the checklist. So we hadn't gone over a, um, I think the two things that we still have to do are a power off landing and a forward slip to land. I practiced my forward slips. They're really fun, actually. I enjoyed it. The, it, was, it was cool. It was interesting. Uh, we did the simulated engine failure, power off landing. All of that went really well. However, <laughs> it was really windy today. And so my landings were consistently too fast and too hard. And so my, my CFI was not comfortable clearing me to solo. Uh, I'm so frustrated because the last time I flew, I did great and I, I, <laughs> I was like ready, except I hadn't done all of these, these additional landings. Um, and then I didn't fly for a week and then I went up on this really windy day. So like, uh, you know, lack of practice. I'm just so frustrated. <laughs> this was it. This was my last time up with her and now she's going out of town and like <clears throat> I am frustrated with myself and with the situation. I think I needed to talk through this just so that I could shake this off and go about my day.
it's gonna be fine. If I were talking to my dad about this, that's what he would tell me. It's gonna be fine. Just gonna take a little bit more time and that's okay. He would probably be a little indignant on my behalf too. <laughs> but then, but then he would tell me that it's all gonna be okay. I just wanna interject real quick with some wisdom gained from time and distance. Around this point in our little journey here, I started getting kind of stressed and frustrated with how long it was taking me. And honestly, in the end, for somebody who was going through this process with a full-time job, I don't actually think it took me that long. But at this point, <laughs> um, I'd been going for months and it felt a little bit like everything up to that point had almost been a little bit of a wash. Like, that's not true, but that's how it felt. Later, I was having a conversation with somebody in the flight school who assumed, based on how many boxes I had checked at that point, uh, I was only at about 20 hours. And when I said 40, he laughed and said, oh, you've just been sightseeing. And jokes aside, he wasn't wrong. I cannot speak to the experience of anybody else who took a comparable amount of time to me, but I was not starting from a place where it was possible for me to be somebody who like went hard and finished it in a couple months and exactly 40 hours of flight time or whatever, because if you'll recall, during this time in my life, I largely did not feel like a person. Also, I say exactly 40 hours because that is the required minimum number of hours. I think that all of this is fairly obvious now, <laughs> um, but I couldn't really see it then. And so on top of everything else that I was feeling, I started to get frustrated with myself for not being better um, and with the circumstances for continuing to be uncontrollable. I have not flown since my instructor left for her vacation a couple weeks ago. What I have been doing is getting through my online ground school and I'm now done. Like I finished, I've watched all of the lessons. Um, so now it's just a matter of taking practice tests and getting ready to do the written exam. So that's like my next big step. I haven't taken any of the practice exams. Yet. There is still more ground school for me to do really like up until I take the test and my check ride for that matter. But uh, I have completed all of the lessons. I just wanted to take a minute and celebrate that. I flew yesterday after work for the first time in over a month. Um, yesterday was January 13th and I think the last time that I had flown before that was like December 11th maybe. So a little over a month. And I was really nervous about it because so much of this is muscle memory. And I was like, man, without having done it, uh, I feel like I'm gonna be kind of a disaster and I'm, it's gonna take me a bit to regain the ground before I'm ready to solo again and that sucks. Fortunately, it went really well. Um, I had a couple landings that were a little flat, but on the whole, I did 10 landings in a little over an hour and they were mostly really good. A couple that were probably my best like ever. It's been a really weird and difficult couple weeks because of the holidays and uh, you know my first Christmas, my first New Year's without a dad were always going to be terrible. Not having this really added to it. Like this has come to mean so much to me. I'm learning how to talk about him in ways that feel joyful and good but like it's sad and weird for other people which is kind of frustrating. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, that's a thing for me to unpack another day. But I think the, the couple weeks in which I wasn't actually flying and I was only doing my stupid online ground school, which I've finished all the lessons, but I'm not ready to take the test. Every time I take a practice test, there's I, like, I don't know. I just feel so stupid, <laughs> um, uh, which, you know, added, I think, to the frustration, right? So like I'm in the middle of a season that was going to be terrible no matter what. And uh, I have only the worst parts of this new, this thing that I'm doing. So, you know, it's been a weird, been a weird couple weeks. But anyway, uh, I am going up today and hopefully it's good. The last couple weeks have been sort of wild. I was traveling for a work thing and then I got sick. In between that, the times that I was scheduled to fly where like I wasn't the problem, <laughs> the weather was the problem, the plane was broken down. Literally right now, I was sup I'm was i supposed to be on my dual night cross country. I was done with the pre-flight, we were ready to go. And uh, <laughs> the rudder was making some janky noises. Fortunately, we did like an hour and a half of ground school beforehand to like prep for this flight and that like that prep is done, right? So like the, the night wasn't a total waste. It's been a weird and emotional time 
on the the dad front my cfi was telling me that she was up with a student and like in one of the cessnas which is what my dad learned to fly in and like the door flew open and i was listening to her tell me the story and i'm thinking about how much i would love to tell my dad this story and what does he think of all of this and the longer i do this the more i feel a sense of personal ownership over it. This is notable too in the tone of, of what I'm doing here, where in the beginning it was really just <laughs> what are the things that I would love to say in a phone call to my dad. I feel more like I'm talking to myself and less like I'm talking to him. And some of this is because like the degree to which all of this is one big conversation with him. I feel it in real time, like I feel that when I'm flying, I feel that when I'm doing it, and so I, I, I have less need to do the active debriefing which is like what this is for and so it starts to feel more like the active debriefing is me talking to myself about what's going on and how i'm feeling because like he already knows i mean you know whatever as i feel this increased ownership of this activity this increased sense of like this is my thing and not just my dad's thing that i'm copying um it also feels more like this thing that I share with my dad. The fact that I feel the sense of ownership, the fact that I feel the sense of like this is a thing that I do um, inherently makes it more of a thing that I have in common with him. That's, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if that actually makes any sense. Be back here in a couple days and hopefully we'll do my dual cross country then. done anything other than pattern work here for so long. Oh, we can leave. <laughs> I can leave. <laughs> I'm, We're I'm not trapped in Hotel California. Jeff Tower, Warrior 43060, holding short 1-2, ready for takeoff, departing to the west. Warrior 43060, Jeff Tower, right turn to the pre my 1-2, cleared for takeoff. At least you kind of learn to land at nighttime, so. The hazards of having a 9-to-5 job is that that's the time. That's the time that works. Definitely no students to do their entire private licenses at night because of that reason. Tower, would it be possible for 060 to set up on a left base for one nighter? Number 060, for his report. Ooh, we're gonna see the moon on the way back. Yeah, hey, look at it. Executive four three zero six zero. Just here, make straight approach runway one two one comma. Timber to three zero one three. Report a three mile final. That was a great landing. I flew again today. Very exciting. Um, it had a really good day. We did a lot of like weird landings. It was also a weirdly busy day. It had a lot of weird instructions. Four four tango. Turn back now. Wait, what? Um, he wants you to turn straight to the runway. This will be good practice for what you would do during a simulated engine failure. Where are you two for a tango? Make uh, right 360 for spacing. Uh, arrival and departure going home. Right 360 for spacing. Where are tango? This is a cool view. Yeah. That's my high school right there. Aww. Um, every now and then, when we're flying, and I notice the high school, I think of the, uh, what's this, the John Mayer song? I want to run through the halls of my high school. I want to scream at the top of my lungs. My plan for tomorrow is that I'm going to get here and uh, do everything like normal. My CFI is going to come with me, and we're going to do a couple uh, full stop taxi backs, which basically means just that like we land the plane and then taxi off the runway and come back before taking off again, as opposed to like what I normally do in pattern work, which is literally touch and go. So like we literally, we come down, we hit the ground and we immediately go back up. So do a couple full stop taxi backs. And as long as those are going okay and there's nothing wrong with the plane and there's nothing wrong with t me <laughs> tomorrow, uh, then I should be cleared to solo. Hey, Tara, this is 4A Tango. Um, I'm gonna send this young lady on her first solo as a student pilot. She's gonna be doing three full stop taxi backs and then heading back into the ramp after dropping me off here. There was a, 
a brief moment after she got out where I like as I'm taxiing and turning onto the runway and I realized that like she was not next to me and it was just me in the plane and I was about to do this without the failsafe of her presence uh, and I panicked for a second. One, two, clear for takeoff, left traffic, 4-8 tango. Okay, we fucking go, I guess. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I relied on Gabrielle's presence. Until this moment. I know how to do this. It, it was fine. I calmed down before I actually took off. Uh, and then, like, once I took off, I was like, no, I, I have this, actually. I, I do have this. I know what I'm doing. And it was great. I, like, I had a really solid loop. I am flying an airplane all by myself. Warrior 4 8 Tango, runway 12, wind 100 at 5, clear to land number 2 behind the experimental east shore final. Oh my god. I just did it. <laughs> this is the coolest thing I've ever done in my whole life. Jeff Tower, 4 8 Tango, holding short 1-2. Ready for takeoff. Warrior 4 8 Tango, runway 12, wind 100 5, clear for takeoff, make left traffic. Center line established. Twin Cessna 0 Bravo Mike, your new squawk is 2104. Full throttle. Okay, in a truly devastating turn of events, my battery on this guy died when I was finishing my downwind and um, had a great landing. Not only did I have a great landing, Tower congratulated me on my smooth landing after giving me my taxi instructions. Taxi, and that was a pretty smooth landing. Good job. Warrior 4, Tango, runway 1, 2, wind 1, 1, 0, and 4, clear for takeoff, make left traffic. This is my last one, and the battery is new, so I better make sure that this final landing is unbelievably dope. I love having this camera on because I would 100% be talking to myself right now regardless, but now it feels like I'm talking to someone. Power all the way out. Hell yeah. Nice landing. Thank you. Nah, yeah, she's just showing off now. Before you take you can taxi to the ramp via Bravo Alpha Alpha One. I wasn't lying. Power said nice things to me about my landing. Uh, I just flew an airplane all by myself, and it is easily the coolest thing I've ever fucking done. And the only reason that I did it is because. I had an incredibly cool dad it showed me that this was a thing that I could could do that I could do for no other reason than because it is fun and cool. Baby's first solo on the books. I spent like a week and a half only doing ground school stuff because first because I like couldn't get on the on the calendar because the weather was so bad and then I was <laughs> scheduled to fly a couple times this week and again the the weather was so bad that it got canceled so I uh, didn't get to fly did get to fly today, finally, um, to prep my first solo cross country. I flew to Marshall and back with my CFI, uh, and then gonna, gonna go do it that same route all by myself. This like practice round with my CFI was pretty windy. Um, fortunately it is supposed to be a very calm day when I go by myself, which is fantastic. I registered for my knowledge test, the, the written exam, um, in a week, uh, it was $175. This whole, this whole process is so fucking expensive. Uh, in the grand scheme of all the money that I have spent on this, the $175 for the test is honestly not that much, but also, it's 175 fucking dollars. It has been a really intense couple weeks because we're getting, you know, getting close to the end here and I have this test that I'm supposed to take in a couple days and I don't really know if I'm ready. I just keep thinking about how much I want to be able to call my dad and ask him to help me with my homework. Like really, truly, I fucking need his help. <laughs> like.
<laughs> um, <laughs> there's all this stuff that I don't really understand and I'm just trying to memorize it so I can pass the stupid test, but he would figure out a way to make it make sense to me. The fact that I missed the opportunity to do this that way, to do this in the way where he could talk to me. <laughs> Uh, fucking sucks. I've soloed a couple times now and he wasn't here. He wasn't here. I'm, I'm doing this big thing because of him and he's not here. There are so many things in a given day, in a given week that like fuck my shit up that I just like, I actually can't, like I can't know, I can't prepare for it in any way other than like when it happens, like I, I you know, Obviously, I have to make some decisions then about how to proceed with my day. In this condition right now, I'm obviously not like fit to, to go fly a plane, <laughs> uh, clearly. So, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of go, no go that I can't make until the moment comes. I talked about doing this all summer when I first came back. And if I had started the same time a year earlier, right? Like if I were at this point a year ago now, um, everything would be, everything would be different. <laughs> I don't really need to get it. Oh man, it's like not helpful for me to get into it. But uh, if I had, if I had been working on this, this time a year earlier, he would have been in town more, which meant he would have been more on top of the doctor's appointments and and, 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 and. So, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a whole, a whole really fun thought spiral for me to go down with that. It is devastating to me that he is not here to see this happen, that he's not here to see me doing this, but also in doing it, I just feel like I am my father's daughter and, and, um, I need that, <laughs> like I need that, I need, uh, I need that reminder, reassurance, whatever. As long as me and my siblings are here, so, so is he on some level, like, you know, obviously to, the, you know, half of my DNA or whatever, but also he raised me and also he, you know, passed down all these interests and I just want to give my dad a hug. Uh, but I can't do that, so I'm talking to a camera, which is very healthy, well-adjusted behavior. Testing time is almost upon us. Uh, I really need to go to bed. I have finished reading this behemoth of a book. Uh, truly so fucking boring, but I, I, I feel pretty good. There are a couple parts in here that I'm not feeling super confident about. Uh, it's really just gonna be luck of the draw, you know, whether or not, it's possible that I might not get any questions about that. I might also get <laughs> a disproportionate number of questions from the things that uh, I'm, I'm not feeling super confident about. I had one last slightly deranged idea. It is an hour and a half, almost two hour drive to the testing facility. And so I decided that I um, would take, I have these little like scraps and note stickies, like all these little papers all over the place. Things I wrote down when I was taking, like I was taking a practice test and I got a question wrong. I like wrote out the, the sentence. And I mostly did this because the act of writing was useful. I've decided to record the world's most deranged and boring audiobook. I'm just gonna read these. I'm just gonna read off all my little notes. I don't imagine this will be very long. I might also read my flashcards. It depends how long this is. And then I'm gonna listen to it on my drive <laughs> to, the, to the testing center tomorrow. I don't know if this is gonna help me at all. I just really don't wanna have to retake this fucking test. So uh, whatever it takes, I guess. <laughs> I am at uh, Central Missouri State University. I believe the Humphreys building is back that way. Uh, my test starts in 40 minutes. I'm supposed to arrive at the center 15 minutes early. So I am, what is that math, 25 minutes early? I'm about to do this. I listened to my little audio book, my boring audio book twice on the way here. <laughs> going to spend the next 20 minutes drinking my water and centering myself so that I'm ready to ready to do the thing. At the very least, I'll be back 
with a successfully completed knowledge test. <laughs> so I passed. I did it. Uh, it's very exciting. I got a 90%. From here on in, it's just flying. Um, I have to get ready for my check ride. I have a bunch of solo time still to log and there's a, a few more like proficiency things that I'm not feeling 100% on, but um, yeah, knowledge test passed. So I took my little test and I did great and I was feeling, you know, on top of the world and I was so excited. But out of nowhere, I just start crying because everything is so fucking double-edged like that now. There is no win that isn't also on some level a loss right because every every little victory every little joy every little accomplishment is another thing that he's not here to experience i just want my dad to tell me he's proud of me <laughs> i just want to hear my dad say it and it's not because i don't know that he he would like it's not it's not even a question in my mind that he would but it's not enough. It's not enough to just know that he would feel that way. But that's all I get now. That's it. It's not enough, but tough shit. It has to be enough because it's all I, it's, that's it. I just feel like I'm never going to get past this place of, I don't know, a, a feeling like a petulant child screaming, it's not fair, but like, it's not fair. <laughs> I don't know. It's not fair. I just wish he was here so I could call him and tell him about what I did. I wish he had been here so that I could have asked him all my questions. I wish that he would have been here to, to quiz me and so that I could have gone into that test knowing I was going to crush it because, because I'd run all the questions a million times with him. And it, it would have been so fun. He would have had so much fun being my study buddy. And I wish that he had gotten to have that experience. I wish that he had gotten to do that because he would have loved that too. Every good thing that I experience now has this horrible fucking asterisk beside it. I had a great day, except. I was so excited about something, except. <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. Hello, today is my very first solo cross country. I will be flying with Marshall, and I decided to mix it up and film myself this time. My little sectional chart, farthest I've ever flown all by my little old self. Jeff Tower, Warrior 43060, holding short 30, ready for takeoff. Warrior 43060, Jeff Tower, winds 280 at 9, proceed on course, runway 30, clear for takeoff. 30, clear for takeoff, 060. I'm off! I am in, an, in the sky because I put myself there. Okay, so I missed most of this flight because the uh, camera overheated and I had to turn it off and decided not to dick around with this until the rest of my shit was sorted. So I am currently over uh, Boonville. I don't know, I don't know if I'm capturing it or not. Uh, there's an airport at Boonville, which is a very important visual milestone for me when I am, you know, making sure I know where the fuck I am. So that airport is uh, one thing. There's also some bridges which are behind me now and almost certainly not capturable here. But that's where I am. And no, the weather. One six Celsius. Two point zero two Celsius. Altimeter two niner niner niner. I see the airport. Uh, I see her. November four three zero six zero contact Jeff Tower one two five point six today. Contacting Jeff Tower zero six zero. Have a good day. Jeff Tower, Warrior 43060 is currently 13 miles to the northwest. Is that to land for full stop? Warrior 43060, Jeff Tower, altimeter 3000. You better set up for the left or right down on runway 30. I could do either one for 30. For Warrior 3060, uh, right, right down on runway 30 and report on the down. That all right? I should have I should have chosen. That was, you know what, that was on me. I hate right traffic on 3-0. I love normal traffic, which is left traffic for 3-0 because it has you flying over downtown. Uh, and right traffic for 3-0 or normal left traffic for 1-2 has you flying over the bluffs, which I do not enjoy. Uh, it's it's not a big deal because I'm coming in for a full stop, so it's not like the path actually flying the pattern. But I'm just like annoyed with myself because... 
I had the option. I had the option. And I and I said, eh, do whatever you want. Whatever you want, guy. But also, I want the tower people to like me. Every kid who was once a pleasure to have in class is uh, in their adult life, like, <laughs> out here seeking some version of that same fucking validation. And so, yeah, I want Tower to tell me that I'm a pleasure to have in class. <laughs> uh, I'm well-adjusted. We're going down, down, in an early around. And sugar, we're going down, swinging. That's my descent song. Down, 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 down. Chef Tower Warrior 43060, right downwind for 30. Warrior 060, runway 30, wind 230 at 5, clear to land. 30, clear to land, 060. Okay, that's my clearance. We were making bets wondering when you were going to call. <laughs> Sorry about that, I forgot. Yep, it was my fault. That's alright. <laughs> They were making bets on what I was going to call. That is the exact opposite of getting pleasure to have in class from Tower. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm currently making my way through this book. Uh, my CFI told me to get it. It is helpful for preparing for my check ride, which has been scheduled. Um, it's happening in two weeks. I'm freaking out a little bit. This book has all sorts of acronyms in it to help you remember uh, the answers to the million questions that I'm going to be expected to answer. And this one has me just uh, like, okay, aviate is the thing, first of all, but also it's a aviate. It's not just aviate, right? But then my favorite part is when you get to the I. It's not even an I. It's 100 hour inspection. The good news is that this made me laugh so much that the I was a fucking one that I know I'll remember it. So what do I know? You know, these people, maybe maybe they really didn't know what they're doing. So. Uh, anyway, just losing my mind a little, it's fine. Another interjection from the future here, now because I feel like there's a bunch of details that I should clarify. First, I don't think I explained this anywhere in the video, but there's a couple different evaluation steps in this private pilot's license process. There's the written multiple choice exam that I took at the testing center earlier in the video. But then the final step on a completely different day is the check ride. That part starts with an oral exam, which lasts a couple hours. Like the exact time is gonna vary based on you and the DPE who's giving the exam and all of that. And then once you do the oral exam, you and the examiner go out and do the practical flying part. Also, if you'll recall those 40 required hours that I mentioned previously, well, in addition to needing 40 total hours, there are a bunch of specific requirements for how those hours completed, like different things that you have to do within those hours. At this point in our journey, I have completed all of those requirements, except that I need to do one more solo cross country flight. I think I was at like four hours, you need five. Uh, and then I also needed to do check ride prep, which has some very specific time requirements that you have to log. In this context, cross country just means that I landed at an airport more than 50 nautical miles from the airport of origin. There's actually a bunch of more specific stuff to say here, but the basic point is I have never actually flown outside of the state of Missouri. Um, the farthest that I have flown is to Kansas City downtown airport, which is actually on the Missouri side. So anyway, at this point, I've just gotten my check ride scheduled for the first time. Spoiler alert, the weather and also illness, which have been factors up to this point, uh, they will continue to be factors up to the end. And now back to my final solo cross country. Jeff Ground, Warrior 43060 on the ramp with the numbers ready to taxi for a northwest departure. Time is 3.55. Warrior 43060, Jeff Tower, Roger, only one, two, clear for takeoff. Pretty sure I can see Marshall and also the runway. Marshall traffic warrior 43060 turning to a two and a half mile final for runway 36. Marshall traffic. Marshall traffic warrior 43060 departing runway 36. Marshall traffic. Clear below 1, 2, 000. Temperature 1, 6 Celsius. Dew point minus 1 altimeter 3, 0, 1, 6. That is the weather at Boonville Airport, which is just off front and to the left. It's been a minute.
minute and a lot has happened and also nothing has happened. So today is April 7th, I believe. And uh, I was originally scheduled to do my check ride on April 4th, which is my birthday. Mm -hmm. The weather wasn't looking that great. And my DPE, who I already had like made contact with, was scheduled, everything was like ready to go. Um, he, I think would have come down to do the oral uh, and just like get that part out of the way. But I was just so anxious about the whole thing that I was basically just like, ah, I don't want to do it. Uh, let's cancel it. So um, I pushed it back to the 20th. I had wanted to get it done by my dad's birthday, uh, March 23rd, which I knew that that like, it, it was pretty clear, I don't know, a month and a half ago that that wasn't gonna happen. After that, I was like, okay, I would really just like to make sure that I have this done before I leave for California. Last week was supposed to be like, let's go hard on check ride prep, right? Um, but I, I was scheduled to fly a bunch and we like, I think like three of the times that I was supposed to fly got canceled because of weather. I, Tuesday, like when I was supposed to do my check ride, I had only done one mock check ride. And like, the, I mean, it was fine, but it wasn't great. You know, I went up for like an hour after work to practice my short field and soft field landings. Uh, those were like the biggest things on my mock check ride where it was like, this needs work. I'm doing at least one more mock check ride before I leave for California on Sunday. I'm actually scheduled to do two, but the other one is after a full day of work and I just don't think that's a good idea. In general, it's not a good idea to fly if you're feeling exhausted, like it's it's dangerous. There's a whole um, checklist about like, there's like personal minimums for weather, but then also sort of personal minimums that you set for yourself. Like what are the, what are the like mental, physical, emotional conditions that I need satisfied like within myself before I make the decision to go fly. So anyway, I'm gonna do at least one more mock check ride, like mock practical portion check ride on Sunday um, before I leave for California. And then I'm scheduled to do two more. So I get back Tuesday afternoon uh, and I'm, I'm on the calendar to do a mock check ride on Tuesday and, and again on Wednesday and then my actual to the the thing is happening on Thursday. So uh, we shall see, <laughs> uh, we shall see how it all goes. The big unfortunate piece of all of this is that it means I am gonna be still in, in study mode while I'm on vacation, which sucks, but whatever, it is what it is. I'm not that worried about it, but it means that I'm gonna be like prepping for the oral while I'm on vacation. Basically, it just means that the time that I would have spent sitting by the pool reading a fun book will instead be spent reading um, my oral exam prep guide or uh, the <laughs> Airman certification standards. Just getting myself really familiar with the ACS. I've been watching a lot of mock check ride videos on YouTube and they have been making me feel better um, because I, I know the answers to the questions that they are asking in these mock check ride videos. All of that to say that it's coming along and hopefully two weeks from today, I will be a licensed pilot. Check ride prep montage. Took more than two weeks. There was more rescheduling, so I didn't actually do my check ride until May. And during this time, I was mostly just recording so that I could watch the like footage back for prep purposes. I recorded several mock check rides and then treated it like game day footage, basically, just to figure out what I needed to work on. And at this point, I was just so focused on getting to the end that I did not record any other kind of update. I just fucking did it. I am now officially a licensed pilot. Today is th Thursday. Friday, Saturday, we were three days away from the one year anniversary of my dad's death. Um, and I am now officially a licensed pilot. When I was taxiing back in, it was a really beautiful sunset, um, which I'm choosing to choosing to take as, a, uh, I don't know, a little congratulations from my dad. Um, I'm so happy and also so fucking sad at the same time. Sometimes it has hurt. Um, I haven't always gotten to think about him in a way that didn't hurt, but more often than not, it gave me an opportunity to think about him in a way that felt joyous. I'm so excited because this thing that I worked so hard for is done. And this is a really wonderful and exciting moment, but also, there's one person who I want more than anything to call and tell. There's one person who I really want to share this with. And I can't. Um, I can't. It went really well. Uh, my DPE said that I, I did a really good job and I don't really know what to do now. Like what, what happens now, what I, what I do with this. I guess I'm going to get my instrument rating, but 
probably not right away. This process was expensive and time consuming and I, I kind of need a, need a beat. And um, th this had another project, you know, like the, <laughs> I was working towards the goal of this day, but it wasn't really about this day. It was about my dad. The whole thing has always been about my dad. I did it though. I did it. And that brings us back to now. You could argue that this video took me eight months and 15 or $16,000 to record. Uh, and then another eight months of <laughs> just sitting through it, combing through the footage or whatever uh, to get to this point here. I had been like poking through this off and on for the better part of the last eight months. Uh, but this past weekend was my dad's birthday and next weekend is my birthday. So uh, at tis the season, I guess, to be thinking about my dad's final gift to me. And that is in kind of a big picture sense how I think about this. I got to the end and I thought, wow, this is a, an incredible gift that he gave me. And I'm so, so lucky, so lucky to have been given that gift. Or at least the final gift from my dad is how I was describing it in the immediate aftermath. I would amend that now to say that it is simply one of many, a very large <laughs> one of many gifts from my dad because something that I learned both from this process and now also from the months of, of time and space and distance that I've had from getting to the end is that there's a way in which just like thinking about him is a gift uh, like unto itself and just the fact that I had him for so many years, the fact that I had this incredible dad for all those years means that he taught me and left me so much and that there are probably so many more gifts from my dad left <laughs> to claim in this life. So I'm just really grateful to have had such a wonderful dad and to have gotten to have this experience to now know how to put myself in the sky. Like, I'm sorry, this is wild. I, I can just put myself in the sky. It is legitimately so freaking wild to me that we have like figured out flight in the first place. Like we are not supposed to be an airborne species. We are meant to be on the ground. And we said, bet. Like, I <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Humans are wild. Humans are so wild. Uh, and the fact that I now get to be among the humans who can put themselves in the sky is incredible. So thank you to my dad for that. And thank you to <laughs> whoever you are who just went on this really long journey with me. It was hard, but it was straight in on the center line. Two out of three, two out of three. <laughs> two out of three. <laughs> And a really aggressive, like spreading of like, like hard butter on bread that kind of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's it's a, it's a butter that's like just barely not frozen. And you gotta you gotta manhand a little bit. That's, uh -huh. that's the kind of that's the kind biscuit of biscuit butter. buttering we just did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The butter was hard. The, the butter uh, needed a little more time to cool, but we made it work. You know. What a great analogy. I like this the more we keep talking about it. Uh, two humanities kids discuss flight. <laughs> two humanities kids. <laughs> yeah. That's a really great way to put it. You need analogies? We got you. We got you, you covered. <laughs> Metaphors? Can we can we speak the mechanics and the physics behind it? <laughs> we, I, I mean, I can muddle my way, <laughs> but we can analogize the but, hell but out of it. If you want to think about it in a really beautiful way, <laughs> we got you. Art, music. <laughs> <laughs>